The small Channel Island of Guernsey is known more for its idyllic landscapes and sandy beaches than the production of elite level footballers. However, a few years back, a youngster named Alex Scott emerged as one of the brightest talents that anybody had ever seen. I've been here for 34 years, so I've seen quite a few, but by far he's the best player we've, we've ever had connected to our football club. I remember the first time I saw him at training, I, I thought uh, that this lad is something else. I mean, just the, the, the speed, the vision, the ability he has. Since becoming one of Bristol City's star men, Alex has inspired two more lads from Guernsey to follow his path and sign for the club. So just how did three young lads from an island of less than 65,000 people go from playing at local grounds like this to playing academy and first team football for a team just one promotion away from the Premier League? This is the story of the Guernsey Football Talent Pipeline. At just 19 years of age, Alex Scott has established himself as one of the most talented players in the whole of English football and was recently named the Championship's Young Player of the Season. The teenager's career trajectory would be impressive for any young professional, but his rise to fame is made even more remarkable by the fact that just three and a half years ago, he was still playing local football with his mates back in Guernsey. It's all happened really quickly. Uh, still 19 now. and. Not 20 till August, I think the amount of games I've played, I think I'm near, nearly at 100 games for, for Bristol City as a, as a professional footballer. So I think that in itself is, is, a, is a great start, especially to have at my age as well. Um, and I think if you told me that three years ago when I first came here, I would have just looked at you like, like you're a complete weirdo because it's something I, I definitely didn't expect to happen. Um, and, and yeah, like the way it's happened, I, I can't complain at all. And, I'm just happy with, with how I've progressed so far. Um, but obviously I, I know there's, there's a million things I need to improve on to, to get to the next level. And it's just something that I'm working on, working on every day to be better on the pitch and off the pitch as well. He has also become a European champion after playing a starring role for the England under 19s en route to their Euro success in the summer of 2022. Yeah, just a bit of a whirlwind really, I think. To be playing for your country, in the first place is, is a massive achievement and I feel we didn't really realise like what we'd done until until after it happened. Um, we we're almost just, I know it's cliche, but taking taking each game as it came in the Euros and yeah, like, like I said, it didn't really sink in until afterwards and, and you come back to to your clubs and stuff like what, what we actually achieved. Um, there's not many teams that, that are going to achieve that. Kit from the final, I think. Got a few photos there with the trophy and stuff. And then obviously got the medal put in as well. Um, and I think, of course, yes, got all the lads to sign it as well the next morning. Um, I think it was a it was a heavy night for a few, a few of the lads. Um, so I think the next morning we all got together and signed each other's shirts. Um, and I think we just took in what really happened the night before. So like I've said before, the best summer of my life. Um, and just share a lot of special moments with special people, which I remember for the rest of my life. I think playing for, for your country is one of the best feelings in the world and one I don't take for granted. So I think that will definitely be, be the dream for me, um, to play in a major tournament for my country. Uh, and obviously in club football, all the, all the highest things possible, Premier League, Champions League, they're, they're all you dream of as a kid. And I think to be lined up and Listening to the Champions League music before a game would, would just be one of the best feelings in the world. I think speaking to to Andy King, who's, who's done it with Leicester here, he says it's just a different level in the, in the Champions League. So hopefully one day I, I do get to experience that. Scott's performances in the last few years have earned him links to a number of major Premier League clubs. And he's rated by key figures at Bristol City as one of the biggest prospects they've had. For, for someone at that age to be doing what he's doing week in, week out in the championship, which ain't an easy league. I think for him to, he's, he's probably getting eights and nines every week. And, and as I said, we're lucky, so lucky to have him part of this, part of this team. And I think uh, the fans and the players, I think we're, we're all enjoying him while we can, because I think if we're realistic, we're probably thinking he's, he's going to be moving on to bigger, bigger things, I think. He's certainly one of the best, uh, you know, that, that I've ever seen in terms of being able to make the transition into the first team and stay there. So 
And he's had to play lots of different positions too. So I think for his education, his time has been very, very good and hopefully it continues for a long time to come. I think he can do anything. Obviously he's in the England setup, under 20s. I think he can go 21's first team of England, um, Premier League, top of the Premier League, Champions League. Like Obviously the sky's the limit, he's still so young. So I think he can do anything that he, that he wants to be honest. Oh, I think he'll play for England for sure. And I think he'll... Uh... He's got the potential to play in the top five, top six teams in in the in the Premier League. Um, there's no doubt in that. And I think the game against Man City the other week just um, just made everybody sit up really because he looked he looked comfortable in that environment against some of the best players in the world. So he's doing extremely well. He's got to keep his head down and keep working, which is never a problem with him. But he can go as far as he wants to go. I think there's anything that he still has to, has to work on. Just not play against Scotland. Being, <laughs> being a Scotsman, that's, that'd be my worst nightmare. But um, do you know what? He's probably, as a 19-year-old, as he's probably got as much as you can probably expect from any 19-year-old. I think um, you see Jude Bellingham at the moment playing for England. And, and you know what? In a few years, that's going to be Scotty. Simple as that. And what would you say that are his main qualities that make him such a good player at such a young age still? Well, he's a good technician. Um... Uh, he, he needs to improve his uh, goals tally, and he's aware of that. Um, and I suppose his assists, you know, th those are the areas where he needs to, to maybe get a bit better at uh, in terms of statistics. But he's, he's got everything. And I think that's, that's really the main thing. He can be re very creative and, uh, yeah, he's able to play the modern game. And that is, you, you need a bit of... Uh, not only to have a bit of pace, but you need to be able to play at a really good tempo. And, and he's got all of that. So we'll see how far he goes, eh? And in the midst of Alex's successes with Bristol City, two more local lads put pen to paper with the Championship Club and joined the academy in 2022. Now, unfortunately for 17-year-old Tim Apsion, his first season with the under-18s was cut short early on thanks to an ACL injury. However, 19-year-old Ben Acey, who is also one of Alex's best friends, has found his footing in the West Country as a regular starter for the under-21 team. Uh, there's been a few ups and downs, but I think that's expected, especially in your first season moving somewhere completely new. But I feel like I've got my head down, cracked on well, kind of cemented myself in the team. And um, obviously we went quite far in the Premier League Cup. So playing like Premier League teams, we beat, beat quite a few of them, I think it was four. So that was always, uh, that's nice, kind of a nice feeling to beat Premier League team. Beat Newcastle as well, I'm a Newcastle fan. So that was quite nice. Um, and then with Alex, like, it would be nice if me and him could kind of inspire people in Guernsey because it's not often you see people from Guernsey kind of make it out, out of Guernsey and do really well. So I think it would be nice to be able to show people that like Alex isn't just a freak like, incident. Like more people can do it as well. And there's like, there is a, there's a gap that's been bridged. So now people from Guernsey can kind of go and take their talent elsewhere in all sports, not just football. But it hasn't always been a straightforward journey for the lads as both Alex and Ben spent a number of years playing for Southampton FC as youngsters before eventually being released, meaning they had to return to the Channel Islands and start from scratch. When you're in an academy and you're so young, you don't really, because you're so young, you just think, oh, I'm just going to be a footballer and my career is always going to be in football. But obviously it wasn't to be, but it was quite a reality check that I think, and it was quite a shock, and I did find it quite hard to deal with to start. And um, but afterwards, I always thought I'd just find myself back in the system. But after a few years, nothing had really happened, and I was kind of, when I was 16, 17, I was thinking, the kind of my football dream was over. I was kind of looking into other avenues of life, looking into university and work and whatnot. But. Um, in six months everything changed. At that age you, you really are just enjoying your football and obviously when you get released and, and that, that dream of being a professional almost gets taken away from you. Um, well that, that's how it, how it feels, um, especially as a young lad. Yeah, it's hard to get your head around. Um, I think you do you do almost lose that motiv motivation to, to keep playing. Um, I think that's something that happened with me. I, I, when I got released from Southampton um, and it was important that I, I went back to Guernsey and almost found my love for the game again and yeah like I've said I've said plenty of times that that was one of the most important things that, that ever happened to me is, is getting released because even come the end of my time at Southampton the last season I probably wasn't really enjoying my football um, 
and then to go home and, and play for my, my local club where I was playing before before I left to go to Southampton, that almost brought the, the love for football back for me. I still remember that day quite well. Obviously when we got the, he was over at the time, but I was with my mum and when she got a phone call from my dad kind of saying that, yeah, it's, um, that kind of, he's no longer going to be there. Um, not a great feeling, obviously, you understand. He, he put through so much, kind of, my parents as well sacrificed so much for him. Um, obviously, missing school, he travelled away every weekend, he wouldn't see his friends, wouldn't really see his family. Like, people don't kind of understand that when he's in the position he is now. Um, and I think after that, he'd probably tell you as well, he kind of lost his love for, for the game a little bit again. I think obviously he had the little spell at Bournemouth, but I think coming back here kind of really helped him kind of enjoy his football again. So Alex went back to playing for his boyhood team, St Martins AC, and it didn't take long for him to find his stride again, even scoring less than a minute into his first ever game of senior football. He's clearly the best that um, um, he's by the country mile that, um, you know, I've, I've had you know, the pleasure and the privilege of coaching and stuff like that. And also from his aspect is the fact that, you know, he, he was at all these clubs and he was, um, you know, being coached by, you know, lots of, you know, more experienced coaches, more qualified coaches. But if you said something to him like that, he'd, you know, he'd just take it on board, he'd, he'd get onto it and, you know, he, he, he would try, you know, his utmost. But, you know, as you know, we were quite blessed with that that, that under-18 side that we had, that there was a lot of good technical footballers that we had and, and that's part. And he, he was just like the icing on the cake for it, basically. You give the ball to Alex and then something will happen. While AC went back to Northerners and quickly broke into the first team, where he played alongside close friend and another of Guernsey's most talented youngsters, Keen Domile. Yeah, we both broke in around the same time, but he was getting a bit more starts than me. But yeah, he's always had that determination and... He's got a good mindset, so he always knew he was capable, and yeah, he did well for us. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't really take any time out. He just went straight in, tested himself, and you could see physically, especially, he understood the game a lot better. And yeah, that's why he's probably where he is. Would you say he's one of the one of the best players you've played with? Yeah, I mean, I know his game quite well. He knows mine, so we both play quite well together. He's quite a, a pretty footballer, if you if you can call it that. He's quite good on the ball, good touch, he can pass. I think he uh, lacks a bit of goals. I tell him that quite often, but if you can add some goals into his game, get forward a bit, a bit more, I think, yeah, he'll be, be good. So by the age of 16, Alex and Ben were both shining once again, playing local first team football. But it seemed as if time was running out. If they wanted to make it in the professional game, they needed a place to showcase their talents at a higher level. And that came in the form of Isthmian South Central side, Guernsey FC. Now, GFC was set up back in 2011 to give local footballers the chance to test themselves in the non-leagues against semi-professionals. The club currently reside in the eighth tier of English football and regularly attract one of the biggest home crowds in the division, meaning AC, Alex and Tim got to play in front of hundreds of fans every single week. I often talk about Guernsey with this sort of moat around us, I call it, sort of an island and, and it's our protection, but it's also our greatest sort of hindrance because obviously we've got what we've got over here. Um, we can't just go out and grab anyone else like they can in the mainland. Um, but what it is, is also protection. So we know we've got some really good players here and if we can look after them and they've got the desire and, and mentality to, to want to push forward. Now we've got the exposure with Guernsey FC and you know, obviously a link with Bristol City that sort of I've got there, then you know it's an opportunity for them and um, both of them, well, and Tim as well, have now taken it with both hands and it's great to see. I mean, if you look at both Alex and Ben's kind of career, if you like, leading up to GFC and the opportunities they both had at, at pro clubs, for whatever reason, it didn't quite work out for them and they had to come back and, and, and take the route they did. But definitely playing football at the level they did, you know, men's senior physical football has had a massive part in, in their progression and also provided the opportunity for Bristol uh, on both of those occasions to come along and say, actually, we've seen enough here to give them an opportunity. And perhaps without that, they wouldn't be where they are now. I think getting that exposure to playing against men um, really is the, the best thing that could have ever happened for me um, and it, it's tough I think it was tough for obviously any coach to throw a 16 year old um, in the mix like that against against these senior players but I think 
uh, I'll, I'll forever be grateful for, for all the coaching staff and everyone involved at, at Guernsey FC because if it wasn't for that, that short spell playing 10, 15 games, um, I wouldn't have, wouldn't have found it found it as easy as I did playing, playing men's football over here at, at such a young age as well. Some of the people you come across in that league, you're coming across like six foot five left backs and I'm playing on the right wing and I'm thinking, how am I getting past him? But you kind of learn the tricks and the little dark arts and how to deal with it. But yeah, it was a nice, it was a good experience and it was very beneficial, I think. And I don't, I definitely would be here without it. And uh, yeah, it was, one of, it was one of the best times of my life, to be fair, that season. Really enjoyed it. So Alex and Ben were both already established at semi-professional level as teenagers, while Tim Apsion burst onto the scene at the end of last season as a 16-year-old. It was obvious that the trio had the talent to make it at a pro academy, but they just needed someone to take a chance on them. And that is where Bristol City came into the equation. Yeah, when I moved to the island, which was in 2010, um, I got to know uh, uh, Teddy Vance pretty well and followed the, the Guernsey FC story. Um, and uh, we, we've communicated and, and Tony has uh, created links with uh, Brian Tinian in particular back in, back in Bristol. So you know, Tony's got over there and coached and, and we've had uh, the old trips over here as well. So it, 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 we've built the relationship and uh, it was just a natural progression. I think that if, you know, if as and when, and it has, a, a good player comes along, give them the opportunity to, uh, to see what they can do in professional football. Yeah, I have got a good relationship with Tony Vance at Guernsey and we've, um, we've loaned some players to, to Tony and Guernsey so I'm really close with him and any players he sees out in his league and when their teams are playing he lets me know and he phoned me one day and said Alex Scott's doing extremely well. He'd been over in a friendly about six months before and played our under 18s and did really well so we got him across. We said right come on let's have a look. Um, he came over, we organised the game uh, for him to play against um, a team from London Academy and um, within half an hour he'd scored a hat-trick, he scored a left foot, a right foot and a header. So uh, we were speaking to the staff at half time and saying, well that's it, that's enough, we've seen enough. So we went over to Guernsey, got him signed, met his mum and dad, uh, all lovely people and, and he's come and, and just took off since really, but yeah, great story. With my uh, Bristol City hat on, it's, uh, I think we, you know, we, we have the facilities uh, to develop, and that's that's our theme. You know, we, we look to our academy to develop young players, bring them from a young age through, um, and our recruitment program to find those players. With you know, if they're somewhere else, that they can come and join us and develop their game with us. Uh, we're not in the, um, the, the the bracket spending you know, hundreds of millions on on players as you can be at the top of the Premiership. So we've got to build, and we build through developing youth. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I think from a from a Guernsey perspective and, and players in Guernsey. It's a great opportunity. They can see the pathway. You know, Bristol City is one of the pathways to, to, to bring players into the into the team. Well, after Tony recommended um, Alex Scott and to see the progress, when he rings me and tells me about a player, I don't need to think twice to be honest. So yeah, we had uh, we had Ben over on trial and he did well enough to um, to get a pro contract. He got a two year contract and he's he's developing really well in our under twenty ones. Tim came and um, joined our scholar group from school at 16, had a brilliant start to the season, scored a hat-trick, was looking extremely good but he had an unfortunate uh, knee injury which has just knocked him back a bit but we've already given him a pro contract for when he finished his scholar already so that's what we think of Tim Apsion. So yeah, three really good players but also very good lads and, and the right sort of lads that fit into this academy. People say it's, you know, what have I had to do with it? And besides being a catalyst, really, and being here, nothing more. Um, you know, they, you know, Alex has done it, you know, by his own ability and his, his own dedication. Ben is doing the same and Tim will be doing the same. And anybody else comes through, it'll all be down to them. It's not, it's not a, it's, we're not making a gift here. You know, it's, it's a serious business. It's, a, it's uh, you know, we want professional footballers for the future. Uh, so anybody coming in has to make the grade. If they don't, you know, there will be disappointments along the way as well. So. Um, I think it's a great opportunity for anybody in Guernsey um, and uh, you know, long may it continue. But do you think there's more players to come in the future as well from GFC? Yeah, hopefully, yeah. We, um, we keep in contact a lot. Tony has visits over here. We, um, we go to games together and watch games here and he's, uh, he's constantly telling me what's over there and what, what might be the next one. So yeah, I'm sure in the future there's going to be more players come over. So it seems as if the future is bright for Alex, Ben and Tim. And with the path to pro football looking stronger than ever, this could just be the beginning of an exciting new era for football on the small Channel Island of Guernsey.